Reviewing your old series is hard. For once, you must get through cringy stuff, knowing that this was you back in the day. At the same time, you have to be fair with yourself. If there are some stuff you think were bad, call it out. If there are some things that were good, explain it why it was. Hence why me, reviewing the last object standing was really difficult and took so long to produce. Also because I'm a lazy bastard. While the show gathered overall a positive reception, it still received some negative feedback due to the profanity and being very similar to other terrible shows with overused edginess. Today, I will look back at my show and see how it still holds up. Is it an actually funny show or is it just characters swearing over and over again? Let's look at... Ugh, last object standing. Fuck. At first glance, making your own object show seems very straightforward. Have a cast of characters, a host, and make them compete. It all sounds easy on paper, however once you get to make it, you realize it is very hard. Especially when you try to stand out from other shows. My small gripe with other shows at the time was that majority of them look the same. They have the same opening, the same personalities, the same mean character going out first trope. Even the first challenge was recycled. If I had a nickel for every object show with a balance beam challenge, I would have a room full of sarcastic little shits. The first order of business when writing the script was trying to make the show look apart as much as it can. In more positive way, that is. Following that, I've gathered voice actors, animators, and we're about to crack out the first episode. But then, the first hurdle appeared. The animation. You all know how bad my animation is, I don't need to elaborate on it again. But that was not the issue here. The issue was time. My episodes were over 20 minutes long. Which is fine if you like longer shows, but it was pain in the ass animating all of this. To save on time, as well as trying to release more than one episode per year, spoiler, that didn't happen, I've decided to go with animatic style, meaning that part of the show was animated, while other was static. I got this idea originally from the last episode of Object Island by Jake, so I've decided to implement it in my show as well. And to my surprise, it was taken very well. So well that many other shows are now using this style of animation as well. With new style of animating implemented, the production went quicker and the first episode of Last Object Standing was ready to go. The idea behind the first episode was to get to know all the characters' personality, hence why this episode is more focused on introduction rather than challenges. Show begins with a warning and the introduction of the host, Ty. Thank you for standing ovations. It's so good to know that I am so respected by so many people. With a quite mediocre voice acting, if you ever wanted to know what the inspiration behind this character was, well... During his speech, he was interrupted by Ginger Ale, Rachel's character that I've turned into a hater, and I'm sorry, but the backgrounds are so ugly. I was trying to get an underground vibe to it, but looking back at it, it looks so bland and uninspired. Without a doubt, I've chosen the most poopy looking palette imaginable. After being fed up with the hater, you are so fucking original, voiced by Catspear, Ty called his co host slash creative for this show, Virtual Roy. As you can see, he is inspired by a terrible Nintendo console called Virtual Boy. I went with the name Virtual Roy for two reasons. One, the initial of it is VR, as in virtual reality. And two, because those initials belong to another quite controversial person revolving with creative, called Vince Russo. This is one of many wrestling inspired characters on this show, so bear with me with explanations. Russo was creative writer for wrestling shows, most notably for WWE, WCW and TNA, for which she picked the name for the latter. 
he was not really good at his job. Quite the opposite, he was terrible. Some of his genius materials feature matches on the pole, where wrestlers had to retrieve objects from the pole, such as belts, weapons, Viagra, and even someone's mother. He also produced multiple incest angles, having swerves, aka plot twists that don't make much sense, and producing two hours wrestling shows with only six minutes of wrestling. Which would be an equivalent of having a 30 minute long episode of Object Show, and having 25 minutes of it filled with, well, filler. So having someone like that making a show would be a pain, but for comedy's sake, he was added in to cause unintentional chaos. Hey, who's the creative control on this show, huh? And he's voiced by a decent Polish voice actor, Trzy. By the way, something I forgot to say in a previous video is that multiple object shows I was involved with were saying things like Sure, but to be more creative, Oh my god, be original! Looking back at this, it sounds cocky as fuck. If you know your show is creative, why do you have to announce it on your show? Anyway, my big creativity is shown by having contestants coming out of the elevator and potentially being dead by lack of oxygen. First one to arrive is Kiwi. Everybody, it's so good to be on this show. Probably the most hated character on this show, which was kind of their purpose over. There were so many one-dimensional, generic, nice characters that were winning object shows that I decided to create my own one and increase her antics by 100%. She's annoying, call everyone a meanie, and doesn't listen to anyone who is mean to her. Looking back at it, she's meaner than she's nice. I might have inadvertently made her a delusional nice character, which is kind of a rarity in object shows. What's a great contest? You shit for brains. Yeah, other notable problem with my show was profanities. More specifically, the amount of it. There was a tag by Tentasaur, the tree voice actor, stating that object shows were not ready for strong language. If you're putting swearing in your script, why? It sounds totally unnatural, stop forcing it to happen. You could be making characters with depth in any other show, but you choose to do this, and I'm sorry, but the genre isn't advanced enough to support your fever dream. Just stop and then go make something else real quick. I don't think heavy curses are bad, as long as you let your audience know in advance. On the other hand though, I went a little overboard with it. 52 swears is way too much for an episode. Back to characters. We have 50p, stereotypical chaff character that instead of sounding British, sounds Australian. Bleeding Yankees. Can't you tell the difference between an Englishman and a Welshman? He has been voiced by Awesome Catman, who also voiced Jaffa Cake, the childish doofus. If I'm honest, I was thinking of her as a comedic relief without any directions. I was going for something like Ed from Ed, Ed and Eddie, but instead... I, I don't know what to think of her. You know it's year 2015 when you base one of your characters on YouTube pranksters. Case in point, Dio. Voiced by Pierce from Shape Battle. He was meant to be a comedian of the group telling not so great jokes and making awful pranks. As I remember, he only made two pranks in this show. One with well received scene and the other... Quite controversial. But we will get there. Violin, probably the most normal and the most level-headed contestant on this show. Your behavior towards other people is really nasty and disrespectful. Nasty. Please don't interrupt me being one of the many characters voiced by years. There have been many normal characters in this show, but they lack a little bit of depth, hence why I tried to give Violin a little bit more of a depth by teaching other objects some good manners. Something that can't be said about Fedora. You were doing your host job very poorly. First you put me into the bugged elevator, and now you're insulting me for no fucking reason? Maybe you could hurt someone doing that, you dick. Pardon me, sir, but I think you should watch your language. Fuck you! I don't think I have to say that he's based on Dark Side Phil. You can tell by him not listening to others, complaining, snorting, <laughs> being bad at video games, and just being miserable. Just like him in real life. I'm the one who operated a successful YouTube channel. Me! Free! Later we have one of the swerves revealed in form of stairs where a contestant could've just walked through them instead of using elevator. Why would I do that? I, I don't know, probably bad created from VR. It is also revealed that Band-8 was also using those stairs, but she fell as she's a slapstick material. Voiced by Brandflakes. 
And that's about her because we have Cologne, the most gorgeous objects based on Zoolander. And then 50 p decide to say this. Mate, I hope this fa- Mate, stay away from me. I know, it's from 2015, but I shouldn't have that in the script. Hence why I apologize for this abomination. But to make it worse, Ferro Rocher, the paparazzi of the show, decided to snap pick of Cologne and get shot by Virtual Roy. Ouch, what the hell? And yes, she is voiced by 100DCX. One character that received a surprising amount of praise was Pierogi, voiced by Katspir. He is an object that speaks Polish but doesn't understand English, besides simple phrases and profanities. He was heavily inspired by Baguette from Brawl of the Objects, before he got ruined in the final elimination. I was going for a more clueless foreigner rather than an object that understands everything but speaks different language. Oh yeah, and we also went from homophobic comments to racist comments. China is a tick tick dang wing Well, that was extremely racist. I know it's DSP quote, but still. In China, they say Chiggy Chang Wang Charlie Chan Chika Chaka Chaka Cha. Shut the fuck up. Aspirin has made a return, this time being more intelligent, sarcastic, and voiced by Webs. One of the gags I had for her in this show is that other contestants are thinking that they saw her on somewhere else, to which she always tried to deny it or change the subject. If you don't know where she originated, Cartridge can fill you in. Hey, isn't that Aspirin from Objects at Sorlin? Cartridge was meant to be a 90s kid, based on one of the Lightbringers character, but looking back at it, he was more of the geek rather than the 90s kid. He hasn't done anything 90s related. And don't ask me about the Yoshi's Ex Orphanage, because this lore is way too deep and too disturbing for this channel. Then we have arguably the funniest title card done by years, and the most obnoxious duo, Pineapple and Glowstick, latter being voiced by Retro. These two were from Jersey Shore. Yes, I made Jersey Shore jokes in 2015. Glowstick was a party girl that also happens to be a massive alcoholic, while Pineapple was stereotypical Jersey douche threatening to fight and overusing the word bro. Hence why Cartridge hates his modernized scrap. There's only one way this could get worse. We could have a contestant that is a hippie. Actually, our next contestant is Lettuce, who's a hippie. You idiot! Why did you brought hippie to this show? For some reason, Ty hates hippies. I personally don't have anything against them, but some of them can be a major pain, yes. Lettuce, also voiced by Webs, was according to me, the first vegan object. In short, she was an environmental freak that would not do anything that has something harming the nature or have meat in it. The last contestant is probably the character I was the most disappointed with, Siren, voiced by Jake. Similar to Virtual Roy, Siren was based on another wrestler called Scott Steiner, and he is arguably one of the most entertaining hothead in the wrestling I have ever seen. And after it's all said and done, you're gonna be taking splinters out of your fat asses all night long because you got some fat asses. So if I set up a meeting with you and Charmel, and I'll be the modifier. You mean moderator. Uh, shut up! Listen, I'm doing him and Aggie. You're not being too fierce. I'm saying up to your dumb redneck ass. I'm hungry. Trying to emulate his kind of behavior and charisma to this show was really difficult. And in the end, I don't think it worked that well. He is not a bad character by any means, it just couldn't have been better. Regardless, he caused havoc by bringing his tiger, Friendskin's one time entrance, and beating everyone up, which resulted in Ty asking if this show couldn't get any worse. Well. And here we have a side story. There were a few episodes where evil objects were trying to control the show, but they were still hosting it. Edible Objects Inks were trying to end the show, as under this set, there are edible diamonds. Something like Compato. The reason behind it? The cells are going down, and they need to save their company. Consisting of the lawyer, Martini, mega and amazing voiced stained glass, who is based on another sleepy object show creator, Bubba Fudge, the co CEO, Cannonball, the dumbass redneck security, and the leader, Cash. I don't think I have to tell you that majority of them are voiced by years as well. <laughs> to help them achieve this goal, Cash hired additional help. Someone who has been involved with at least two object shows in the past. Steak. There was meant to be a plot point which explains why Ty hates Steak and how he's ruined next up thinking. But to this day, I still haven't thought about their reasons. Regardless, 
the seed had been planted for future storylines that in the end didn't happen. Tai has announced that teams will be split to boys and girls, or gentlemen and Amazons in this case. Gosh, these names are so uncreative it hurts. As for separations, I didn't thought it was a half bad idea, considering that shows like Hell's Kitchen and The Apprentice had teams based on their genders, and I didn't so many objects shows doing that, so... Following team reveal, we have more character interactions with some decent jokes, as well as the most controversial moment of this episode. I'll just play it. Excuse me, 50p. You seem to be boiling. Do you want a punch? Fucking what, mate? I said, do you want a punch? Mate, I would fucking stab you. Mate, if you dare to fucking hit me, you little shit. Wait, wait, wait. It was only a prank. See? I was talking about a drink. Well, I'm getting the fuck away from here. Come back here, you little mate! Yeah, he shouldn't have said the C word. In my defense, I live in UK, where they use that word quite a lot. However, Cormac, one of my co-animators, informed me that this word is apparently illegal. I mean, yes, I agree. It is a strong word, and I probably shouldn't have had it. Especially twice. This show has a lot of bad words in it, but it really didn't need some strong words like this. Thankfully, I didn't have an N-word in this show. Yeah. The episode ended with even more DSP quotes. Oh, come on! Bull fucking shit. Suck my fucking dick. I'm going home. The price reveal? A whole 22 million dollars. And a cliffhanger. That's a pretty lame ending. Suck my dick! Yeah, the first impression of this show has been mixed. Some of it praised for the ideas, such as introduction, the side story, and even some of the jokes. However, the big issue seems to be an awful background, some not so developed characters, and especially swearing. The worst part is, how about these swears were very unnecessary? It was just swearing for the sake of it. With all the criticism I have received for episode 1, I have tried to implement it for the next episode, which lasted over 30 minutes. God damn it! I seriously thought that this episode would be shorter. But no, it's actually 10 minutes longer than the first one. Maybe that's why it took me over a year to complete it and release it on 420 of all days. I wrote in the description that I felt kind of meh about this episode, even though it received more positive response than the previous one. And yes, the title is an insane Count Posse reference, mixed with Vince Russo's old podcast name. Episode 2 starts with Edible Objects Inc., talking about object shows most of it being obviously off-screen. Once they decided to buy off the show, since you know... Everyone has a price. <laughs> Stake revealed that he can't come in due to Ty knowing him and ruining another object show. I was planning to do some crossover stuff with Entity, but I couldn't thought about what he did that made him ruin the next up thingy. While we're on the topic of Entity, do you see those dorms? Those are meant to be used in episode 3, however Retro cancelled his show and I decided to use it. And don't worry, I asked him for permission. Boys woke up to the terrible tweening and awful sounds of dubstep, which caused some of the extra ruckus in the team. What's that bro? You want the song to be- The fuck bro? Listen you bitch, if you're going to wake me up with this crappy dubstep one more time, I will tear your hair leaf by leaf. The noise didn't stop though, as Glowstick was doing the same thing for girls. Two of the same characters were discussing it outside, while Kiwi was... Come on, girls, we have to be positive. That will help us win the competition. Well, being a Kiwi. That's the biggest pile of rubbish I've ever heard. <laughs> how, how could you be so mean to me? And yes, this was a common thing I saw on object shows. Following some dead assery from Band-Aid and Ferrero Rocher, we get to see Lettuce, Plantation of Veggies and Mary Jane. Which is of course the other name for... Weed. What's the tape for? <laughs> Stay away from Mary Jane. Mary Jane? Um, yes, I'm naming those plants so they can grow faster and tastier. 
cutting back to Ty, where he is visited by the Three Stooges, attempting to take over the show, only to be stopped by Jeff a Cake. Hey Ty, where's the roller coaster? Roller what? Yeah, the place you ride on a cart in... Oh, cartoony mustache! I've always wanted one! This scene is messy if I'm honest. I believe low parts should have been more clear and in the end, it really made much sense. I think I was trying to get them a reason to scare Ty away so they could get the show easily, but I don't think it looked well overall. At least I like the name Schnitzel for steak. And I am here with my two lawyers, Martini and Schnitzel. Good morning, say. Good dog. They got taste and decided to screw this place, as if they don't need any more money. Until Fudge announced that the stocks are dropping down due to the lack of edible diamonds, meaning that getting this show is their last resort. First order of business is to sabotage the next challenge, which is an obstacle course and fuck me, just look how bad this looks. Alright, let's begin our first challenge. Is it a balance beam challenge? Who said that? Remember the time where the every first challenge in object shows were balancing related? Good times. Cologne decided to sunbathe instead, Feral Rocher stalked him, Glossy got drunk, Peering didn't know what to do, Lettuce didn't want to go anywhere near the chicken next stock, and Fedora was being at what? Challenge started off with quite a lot of bantering and interaction between characters as well as, once again, poking fun out of the other object show trope. Alliances. Now Kiwi, what is your idea about? My idea is to form an alliance so we would be in the final four. And? Will you hear part after? How is that going to help us get past this obstacle? With the alliance power. Later on, we've got a fight between Cartridge and Pineapple, which resulted in this character coming back. Mate, what was that? Any problems, man? Don't talk to me, you chauvinistic homophobic white pig! I'm grey, you! Shush! This is Picket Sign, one of the OCs of Fierce Animations. Looking at the comments, some people say this aged well, and some say that didn't age well. Which one is it? I don't know. I review mid animations for crying out loud. Picket sign got stays and downright murdered, so other contestants could get past the second obstacle. Ty tried to get Pierogi to cooperate, but he doesn't speak English, so he decided to talk with Fedora instead. I couldn't block, of course. And who is now voiced by Master of Zoroark, one of my favorite poopers from the packs. He has been confused along with Lettuce and Glowstick. Okay, this looks like an easy challenge. Let's go! Well, come on! That is a true DSP moment right here. Girls with Bentei's help decide to build a bridge as well as using her as a rope to climb the wall. Meanwhile, Steak and Stained Glass were messing around with the boxing glove wall from Wipeout, which resulted in Steak being launched in a trash pile and found old papers, which, as I mentioned in a previous video, were about rejected recommended characters. More stupidity from boys happened, along with 50 piece bad teeth and him wanting to stab other contestants. Mate, you better watch your mouth. Whoa, whoa, dude, chill out. There, there, there's no need to. Stand back, you wanker. I swear, the next person that comes near me will get shanked. How do you even hold those knives if you don't even have hands? What? <laughs> what banter? Cartridge, though, decided to use his knives in order to climb the wall, which actually worked. But he noticed that girls were right in front of them. Cologne finally woke up right before Ty told him to do the challenge. And Nightball appeared as he wanted to go back to his show. And this is also the last time you're gonna see Ty for this episode. <laughs> Meanwhile, Ferrero Rocher was feeling confident as she has a money-making picture of Cologne, only to be destroyed by Glowstick, who vomited all over it. Ah, you stupid skunk! As this happened, Fedora is doing his best at complaining when suddenly Cologne said to help him and put him on his head. Girl reached the quiz section and I don't understand why I've put Review the QSA on here. Oh, that's why. <laughs> Everyone is once again fed up with Kiwi, and the remaining team members are starting to catch up. And then we have my personal favorite moment of this episode the cooperation montage. 
all animated by Cornmac. This song from the background was used in a Sesame Street, which I didn't originally knew as I first heard of it on YouTube series called Batramania, which ironically was used in a moment where wrestlers were not cooperating with each other. We have reached the final part of the challenge, where contestants, instead of eating churros, are eating... Oh, you got to be kidding me. Churros! Um, those are chicken necks, dear. Oh. Chicken necks. Another word swelled by the creative. In the end, boys win due to Siren's appetite, girls not willing to eat this, and Kiwi downright sabotaging her team. Her reasoning? Kiwi, why did you do that? Well, unlike you, I was trying to be nice and help other people. But you've helped the other team, you imbecile. You see what you've done? Yes, I made our team lose, so everyone can eliminate you because of your meanness. So, yeah. That's so... You know what? I won't even argue with you. You're not even worth my time. I mean, it kind of makes sense. I don't care what anyone says, I love this pun. We are now at the voting ceremony. One thing I did for it was adding a different font for each character, so we could possibly kind of guess who voted for who. As Kiwi was about to get eliminated, she decided to tell a sob story, which, to be fair, was a dead attack stupid scene from Object Universe. You know which one I'm talking about. Before you announce the next vote, I'd like to tell everyone a story about how I was bullied when I was in the primary school. Sorry, sweetheart, but your made up sob stories mean nothing on me. She was cut short though, got eliminated, and was told to get down. <laughs> and the episode ends with the contestants being stuck on the animation area at the top of the mountain. This episode had a lot of issues when it comes to animation, as well as some of the scenes not making much sense, but overall, it was definitely an improvement when it comes to comedy and characters. Yes, there are still some bad words here and there, but they have been cut down and I sort of proved that I can be funny without using the word fuck. Hopefully that would mean that the next episode will be... Oh wait, I forgot I've cancelled this series. I don't think I'll make people happy with this, but overall, I don't think Last Object Standing was bad. I also don't think it was good. It is okay at best. The biggest criticism for the show was profanity, which was the reason why many fans deem it as bad. While I agree I went overboard with it in episode 1, and even used some very strong ones, that shouldn't really be the reason why the show was bad. There are many popular medias that use bad words. That doesn't mean they are bad. What is bad though? Half of the voice acting. Sure, we have some good quality voice acting by Years, Webs, Chiji, and Zorar. But then we have my terrible voice acting, Retro's low quality microphone, and Cat Spears who didn't really want to voice act at all. Same with animating. Some scenes look fantastic, while others are glitchy and not polished enough. And those scenes were mostly done by me, which makes me feel really ashamed. And the writing... For the most part it was consistently good. But even then, it had some really weird plot points that I feel weren't explained enough. As for humor... Well... It is subjective. I can't tell you what is funny and what is not, so you have to decide it for yourself. And I'm actually surprised how many people found this show to be funny in overall. In the end, I have to say that this show wouldn't be possible with the help of some of the most amazing people in this community. Which is why I decided to wrap this review up with a thank you for these following people. Retro. Yes, he is a very controversial person in this community. However, if it wasn't for him and his insights about making an object show or how to make a scene, a script, Last Object Standing wouldn't exist in the first place. Cormac Oliver Even though we are not talking to each other anymore, Cormac has been the most helpful person when it comes to making LOS. He has made some great scenes, helped filling out for others and genuinely being very helpful towards me. It is also great to see him working on BFDI. If you ever see this Cormac, I really appreciate what you did for Last Object Standing. 
years animations. A man of many voices. Admittedly, I gave him way too many roles. But when he did them, they were always top notch. Not only that, he was also very helpful with my script for upcoming episodes. I'm glad to see him continue doing well in this community and helping out on a great show called Paper Puppets Take 2. Numbers You see those assets and props? Those were done by numbers on DeviantArt. I am a terrible artist and I needed some quality designs for my shows and she was more than happy to help me. If it wasn't for her, my show would look like the first episode of Object Illusion. Numbers, if you ever see this, I am extremely thankful for what you did and if you need some sort of compensation for making all of those assets, I will gladly do it. Hi then. I was highly skeptical on hiring unknown people in this community at first. However, that changed for me once Hyven showed up. Not only he was delivering his scenes on time, he also made them look phenomenal. No wonder he's an animator for both The Power of Two and Another in Insanity. Not to mention, he's also doing some great streams as well. And for crying out loud, STOP ASKING ABOUT FUCKING THANOS! PLEASE, OH GOD, SHUT THE FLIP UP! Whoop do. I would like to apologize for you for cancelling episode 3 and not showcasing your great animation and your amazing voice acting. Right now, you are doing well, and I appreciate how my show was the breakthrough for both you and Ivan. And I'm glad that both of you are doing well. Webs for Fs. Yes, we have bumped heads multiple times. Yes, I have removed them from my show after episode 7 of EE. But I would lie if I say that Webs wasn't a good contributor for Last Object Standing. He is a great voice actor and a funny guy in general, and I am glad that after all those years, we have finally made up. 100 DCX Not only help me with voice acting for my show, but also motivate me on an international level. Despite not being a native English speaker, you made a great and memorable object show that I wanted to follow your suit. Brandflakes he was always helping out on smaller shows, so it's no surprise that I asked him for help. And as usual, he was showing why he's one of the better animations in this community. Probably due to him making all those fine faces. Master of Zoroark I was really surprised when I saw you lurking around watching object shows. And I was even more surprised when you accepted the role for one of my characters. While it was a short lived, it was great hearing your voice in my show despite that your character was based on one of the worst human beings on this planet. Regardless, I really appreciate your help. Pierce. Some people might not know this, but during the production of a couple of episodes, Pierce was in the hospital dealing with illness. The fact that he was helping me on the show despite all of that really shows what kind of a human he is. I truly appreciate all the help that you did for both voice acting and animation and I really hope you're feeling well at the moment. Jake I know he's not a part of community anymore. However, he was a phenomenal friend, along with being one of the most fun voice actor I had on my show. Not only that, but he and his show, Object Island, was a massive inspiration for my style of the show once I have ditched the animation. While he might not be in this community, I appreciate all he did for me and other people. You. I would like to thank all of you for enjoying my show, even after leaving this community and giving me all this feedback so I could make it even better. While last object standing might be gone, my appreciation for you will never go away.